Okay, so I got the recording going. Um, it's the first time I've heard it tell me that it started recording, but cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna look at object-oriented relationships and some code here on this REPL. Um, this REPL will persist, so let me actually share this in the chat because it should automatically still be there, um, if I remember correctly. So we'll have some code to look back at. But yeah, we're going to look at some coding examples and any questions along the way, if you feel to shout them out or throw them into the chat. Um, I do keep the chat in a different, on a different screen, so I don't see it, always see it right away when I'm over here in the screen you're seeing shared typing code. So if you type a question or a comment in there and I don't get to it right away, I promise I will. It just takes me a minute to kind of glance back at it. Um, it doesn't flash or anything, um, at least that I've been able to figure out. But yeah, let's look at some things. Um, I'll actually start over here in song. So this is a uh, REPL. It's just uh, kind of a full code playground that's available to, to throw some stuff in. So let me space this out some. Cool, okay. So first thing that we're gonna look at is a belongs to relationship. So a belongs to relationship allows one object to quote unquote own another object. So to set up, oh yeah. How's that, is that looking better? Perfect, cool. Yeah, I forget that resolution different for uh, different screens and stuff. It, it translates differently. Cool. Okay, so yeah, a belongs to relationship allows one object to own another one. And um, the steps to set up a belongs to relationship, and let's create our class here. I'll actually create all the classes just so I don't have to do that later. Class artist. Uh, genre. All right, song. And to set this relationship up, we're going to need to create an accessor for the object it belongs to. So a song will belong to an artist. So we're going to set up an accessor for artist. And run this. Uh, did I spell that right? No, it needs an O. Accessor. Yes. Cool. And then I have this little script here to get the code actually available in there. That I need to run. So this is like an IRB terminal. So even though I run this, it runs the code, but since nothing's being returned or such, um, we won't have access to all those, these classes and variables and such and functions until we set this up. So now if we do song.new, we get a song. And we can do something like s.artist, equals artist.new. And now our song has an artist associated with it. So if we did song.artist, we'll get our artist back. And we haven't added, you know, names and things and titles and such to these. So we're just getting right now the, um, I guess that's a, hexadecimal, um, but it's just a location and memory, it's telling us. So those numbers are different and will change over time as we create more objects. So let's look at, let me create an artist class so that we can do some things with here. With it, I wanna give them some, some names, artist a name so that we can, 
initialize um, so that we can have it a name. So we can give it a name. And then that way, so at name equals name. That way we can do artist.new with a name and kind of start to see the differences of things. Run this again. Get back to my require. Okay. So let's create a couple artists and see the difference between. Oh, I guess we didn't need to build that just yet. Uh, song.new. So we have a song. So if we do something like s.artist. So we put them in two different uh, .rb files, two different Ruby files, because we want to, as we build our objects, we want to keep them contained not only with the code that they contain, but the, the actual files that they're in. So this is going to help us structure our project as it grows. So by keeping the classes in their own files, it's on a Ruby convention, but it also helps us keep things more contained because code grows very, very quickly. Um, so in our case, you know, this might end up being, I think it's going to be maybe like less than 20 lines of code, but sometimes these classes can be, you know, 150 lines of code. So you wouldn't want to put five of those in the same file. It'd be really hard to work with because of how many lines you have to go up and down with. So really it's separating it out for organization as well as for working with it and making it easier to work with. Good question. Okay, so we have, we're gonna create an artist and we can do two different things here. So there is a difference. So if we did something like artist equals Adele. Um, oh, I didn't set that equal to anything. Song got new. S dot artist. If we set that equal to something like Adele, our song now has an artist equal to Adele. And if we did artist equals, oh, not the string, um, artist dot new Adele. and we look at our song, we can see the difference here. So while our artist is still equal to this, you know, Adele, so to speak, um, one is an instance of the artist object that has a name Adele. So we have this one. And then the other one is just an, a string that has Adele. So we wouldn't be able to do, we wouldn't be able to add functions or we wouldn't have that whole, everything that we're, we're building the object with. So we always want to do our best to associate objects um, when we're doing things like this and we're building object relationships. We want to associate the objects and then have access to the properties of those objects as opposed to just setting it directly equal to something that, you know, we need because we have s.artist. And you know, if we do dot name method, oh, we haven't set that up yet. So we'll set that up. Okay, any questions on setting up a belongs to relationship? Okay, great. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, continue to just throw them in the chat and we'll address them as we go. Um, okay, so once I've set, you know, this, this song, oh, that's the wrong variable, yes, this song here um, to have this artist.new association. So we have a, an s.artist equals an artist object. What will the artist know about the song? So if I did um, 
uh, I guess I can't, I'll have to build another artist object. So let's say a equals artist.new. Um, uh, Michael Jackson. And then I do s dot artist equals a. So now, okay, so now our song has an artist with the name of Michael Jackson. And if I look at, you know, a is our artist, I did a dot song, what do we think we're going to see when we do it, when we look at this? So when I hit return, what do we think is going to happen? And guesses are just fine. Okay. So do we think, do we think we'll see um, I guess the song doesn't have a title. Do you think we'll get the, the song object back to us um, or an error? Let's, let's take those two. Will we get the song object or will we get an error? Okay. Oh, I'm on the wrong place. So yes, we get an error. Undefined method song for artist. And that's because we need to set up our has many relationship. So we've only set up one side of this relationship before. So a song belongs to an artist, but we haven't set up that an artist has many songs. So let's set that up now. So we gave the artist a name, but we need to set up the has many now. So the has many is a little bit more involved. Um, and this relationship allows one object to quote unquote, own multiples of another object. So first we need to create an accessor again. Attribute accessor songs. And let's also put name in here. So if we want to do anything with the name, we can. And now we want to create an array so we can start you know collecting all of these songs so we're going to have at songs equal to an empty array so when we when we create a new artist object it'll have a name and it'll have an empty array of songs and then that way we can add songs to it over time and it will we'll know about all the songs so we can have multiple songs in that array now let's add some songs not my little requires script okay <clears throat> i'll say song equals let's add an i'm going to add a title to song as well It'll make it easier to distinguish between the objects. So add title equals title. Okay, we'll do this again. Okay, so now song equals song dot new. Let's call it hello. Given one expected zero. Nishi, I probably spelled that in. Spelled it wrong. Okay. 
song equals song new. There we go. Song with the title. We can say artist equals artist dot new. Cool. So we see this artist object has a name and an empty array of songs. And let's say now we can add to those songs with all of our typical array methods. So if we do artist.songs, we get an array. So we can call methods on this returned array just like we would any other array. So if we do artist.songs, we can use a shovel, just shovel in song, our song. And we see it returns a song, the song hello, in this array. And now if we look at our artist, we'll see the song object in that array. If we do artist.songs, we will see the song. And we do, let's say song two dot new, or I guess song song two equals song dot new. I don't even know that I know anymore. Go song titles. I'm sure I do. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's see another song. And then if we add that to the songs, we can use artist.songs. We can use push, um, another array method, and say song two. And we see now we return two songs in the array. We do artist.songs. We get back both songs. And if we look at our artist, we get the artist object, which has a name and then has multiple songs. So if instead of shoveling or using a push or something, if instead of adding a song that way, what if what would happen? What do you think if we did artist.song songs, sorry, equals um, song. So that first song, hello. And then I guess the full question is after doing this, then try to add another song. So you can do artist.songs equals song then artist.songs and either shovel or push song two. I don't know, what do you think? Think it, it'll work? I like that you're, you're wondering. So you've realized that, yeah, we're doing something different. Okay, so let's do this one. Okay, so that did an error. We got a song object returned to us. So let's see what happens when we try and add song to our song to. So here we get an error. And we see undefined method shelf for the song object. So what happened, artist.songs, is that we replaced, and I'll just show the artist also, we replaced that array that we had there for songs with a song object. We set it equal to explicitly. So we overwrote the songs variable to no longer be an array. So, a couple follow-up questions. One, why is this bad? <laughs> Um, and two, any ideas how to, we might fix this, this issue where, you know, we can set it equal to anything really we could do start song equals a number and that'll work. Yes, now equal to a number, an integer.
Yeah, it's definitely bad because, you know, if we're thinking about, you know, creating this object and structuring it and building multiple objects off of it, um, we could have, and I guess we should have the artist code up. Um, we could have multiple arts. So we could have, you know, Adele where songs is an array and we could have Adele where, or not Adele, like Michael Jackson where songs is an object and we could have some other artist where songs is a string. And that's gonna be really hard to work with. You know, we want these objects to be consistent, especially in the type of variables and properties that they have so that we can write, you know, functions and methods and and work with groups of objects at one time. Yes, so one way to fix this is to get rid of our attribute accessor for songs, because that is setting up for us a setter and a getter. So the setter is what we're using that, with that equals. So let's change that to a reader for songs. And now that we've set it as a reader, we have to also set up a way to get some, or actually we don't yet, um, but it'll help here in a minute. Uh, let's get the code back. So I'm going to start making these shorter. Uh, okay, so what was I doing? Uh, A dot songs. Can shovel in a song now still uh, s so we still that works but if we tried and do and did if we tried to do sorry a dot songs equals uh, s for song our song object we get undefined method songs equals so we no, no longer have this way to make an equals you know that we took away that setter which is songs equals so something else we would most likely do is create a method for when people do want to add songs. Um, we want to abstract it away a little bit more um, so that we're not just using array methods here. Um, we want to even more explicitly restrict this. And we can say something like uh, add songs, a song, and then with this we'll do We'll shovel this, the individual song in. Okay, so we can add songs to the artist. And I'll leave this in here so it's there the next time, you know, if we refresh our, our Ruby console. But what do we think? Will, will this be reciprocal? So We've added this song to the artist. If we did, so here's s.artist, um, our song object right here, this hello. It's kind of, that's hard to see when it's highlighted. Um, that song object, will, we know, will it know it's artist now? Okay, and unsure, yes. A no. Firm no. Okay, we'll see. So yeah, we don't know the artist yet. 
So just like we did before, we have to wire up the other side of this um, so that we can make it reciprocal. So it's very important that when we have one half of the relationship, when we create one half of the relationship, that we add the other side as well. And to do this, we're going to create some methods that will automatically do it for us. So we want to, you know, when we do, when we do our ad song in the future, we want, after we do that, we want it to, we want this method to automatically um, associate it on the other side with the song. And then we want, when we do, you know, s.artist, we want it to automatically add the song as well. So let's do that here. We'll have to make a custom attribute writer for the song, but let's, we're in the artist, so let's start in the artist. So we have our ad song and we will do song.artist equals self. And I'll walk through this step by step here in just a second. And on our song, we're going to do an attribute writer. So let's change this to, well, we can make this title. Reader uh, artist. And we will say artist equals, and that's our setter. And song artist equals, yes, at artist equals artist. And then artist.add song itself. So. Okay. So when we have an, an instance of a song object, now we'll, we'll do song.artist equals the artist object. So that will set that equal in the, in the song. And then on that artist object that we just set it equal to, we'll call dot add song. And we'll pass in this current instance of the song object that we're calling artist equals from. And that will go to the artist and do add song and it'll shovel the song object into the songs and then do song.object artist self. So what do you think will happen now? Let me, I'm going to start creating the objects when we add a song or, or equal an artist. Infinite loop. Song equals. Oh, songs. Oh, wait, add song. Add songs. I guess that yeah, should probably be singular. What am I? Artist, add songs. Okay. Artist add songs. A song object. Add song. Ah, oh, yeah, I was calling it completely wrong. Didn't that load? Did I not run this right? Possibly. Okay. Artist dot 
Mad songs. Oh, that's where we're hit. it's it is an infinite loop, but the infinite loop is breaking right here. That's where the error is coming from. Over here. Add song. Okay, but you're right. It's an infinite loop. And to save time, I'm not going to do it one more time just to show an infinite loop. But yes, we need to check to make a reciprocal only if it hasn't been added. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, we're in the artist. And we'll say that we're going to do this if song that artist is not equal to self. So it's going to check the current song and call dot artist and it's equal to it, it to itself, then we're not going to add it. And we'll do something similar on the other side. And say if I guess we can say unless artist dot songs dot include self. Okay, let's do this now. Yeah, so this line. Okay. So I guess if I wanted to keep it exactly like the other one, we could say, well, I think if not, but I think unless is a little bit clearer. Um, so we're saying that we're only going to do this or add the song to the artist if or um. Yeah, if it's not a part of that array. So we're going to say artist.songs, which is the array of songs for the artist object that we're passing in. So um, S equals, I'll walk through each part of this. If I have some objects I can reference, I think it might help. Song.new, hello. Okay, so when we do artist, so s dot artist equals this artist object. So we're passing in this object right here, this artist object. And that's going to execute, and we're going to set the artist property of this song, this hello song, equal to Adele. And then we're going to go to the next line, line 11. And we're going to say, okay, let's check first, because this is an unless, let's check artist.songs. So we're going to go to the, this artist that we just passed in, and we're going to go to Adele. We're going to look at the songs array. Does that songs array include the current object, the current uh, song object that we're in? So does that songs array include, in this case, hello? And if that comes back true, then we're not going to do artist.addSong. If it comes back false, then we're going to do artist.addSong. Did I clear it up? Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. Both of you, yes. Um, and that way, if it's already there, it's not going to add it again, because if we add it again, then we go to artists, and that's where our infinite loop comes from, because we're going to add it, and then we're going to go and try and add it over here. And that's why we have on both sides this, this check, so that if instead of doing song.artist, we do artist.add song, then we have the check on this side where after it adds the song, it's checking to see if that song's artist is already the artist. And if it is, it's not going to, to set it. And if it isn't, then it is going to set it. So 
So we have to do both sides of it because we can cause that loop. Well, it wouldn't be a full loop if we only had the check on one side, but things would get added twice. So when we associate, we don't get the infinite loop. And if we do artist.songs, we see song object in an array. And if we do song.artist, we see the artist object. And these objects aren't completely as clean as they could be. Um, they would need a little bit of cleaning up uh, because we see this like dot, dot, dot. And that's because the artist is showing the song and that song has an artist which has songs in it and that song, those songs have artists and, and so on and so forth. So it would be like an infinitely long string kind of um, representation because it's nested inside of itself. But we're not in a, in a loop in our code and that's, that's good, I think, or it's good enough for our example here to show how we create these associations. So that was the has many relationship. Any questions about this? It's a little bit more in depth than, and we did more than just create the relationship as well. And we can also, if we try and do something like s dot song dot artist artist equals, it's not going to work for us. Okay, no questions. Okay, so I don't think we're going to get to the end of this last association, but I think I'm going to code it up real quick so you can see it and see what it does. Um, and since I'll throw the link again for this REPL into the chat. Um, you can kind of dive into it a little bit more and play around with it. But the last association is a has many through. And this is, you know, when the song class might have other relationships. So it could also belong to a genre or a person who bought the song. And because of this, one object can actually have indirect relationships with other objects through a, a quote unquote middleman. So for our example, an artist has many songs, and if a song also belongs to a genre, the artist is able to access information about the genres through the songs and has an indirect relationship with the genre class. So I'll set that up real quick. Because I need to get a thing. Um, maybe back to here. Okay. Um, cool. So the genre, let's do genre real quick. Uh, reader songs, add song, add the song. Add songs, add the song, add the song. It's going to look very similar to what we already have. So self if song dot genre is not equal to self. And then GLI's 
songs. Okay, and then on the other side, let's. Uh, not an accessor, a reader for genre. Genre called genre. Genre equals genre, and then genre add song self. Less genre dot songs to include oh. okay. So say one equals or this dot new. So I got new hello. Um, genre dot new. I actually didn't give genres any names. Uh, that should be fine. Just one genre. Oh, uh, and then let's say oh, and then song two. Okay. Hey dot uh song. I guess a one dot add song song one. And let's say s two dot artist a two. Okay, and then s two dot genre equals g one. Genre dot songs dot include. Oh. Genre dot songs. Oh, songs aren't equal to anything. That's a pain. Okay. I'm going to use all of this to my advantage. A1. A2. S1. S2. Genre. Okay. And then let's find out artist equals a one, two dot artist equals a two, swan dot genre equals g one, two dot genre equals g two. Or I guess there's only G1. Okay, so that's a lot. But what I really want to show is this has many through is that we can do something like um, A1, so the artist dot songs dot genres. Hmm. Oh, we didn't, that's not a method. 
dot, let's say dot all. Dot. John Ruz, songs have John Ruz, plural. Dot. I'm getting my message next time because I'm trying to rush. Um, so genre has songs and then genres dot songs dot let's say the first song dot artist go the other way <clears throat> we get the artist object which has a whole bunch of stuff in it because like we saw before we have kind of these nested objects inside of each other which is not pretty but it it's working for this but we can see how we can take a genre and work backwards and get a songs get all the songs for that genre and then get one of those objects and get the artist we can chain these things together to get all of our information so if we created a method such as you know an artist's plural method where we we did something like uh, in genre, if we did something like, uh, I won't have time to show this one working, but I'll leave it here, uh, artists. And in here, we did something like self.songs.collect. So we're going to create an array. And in there, we took each song. And we did song.artist. And then we cleared out all the duplicates. We can do things like genre.artists and get all the artists that have songs in that genre. We can build those, one of those out in genre, and we can build one of these types of things out in artist. We can do all sorts of uh, cool things that way. So, any final questions? Um, I know I blew through the last stuff quickly, but I wanted to kind of squeeze it in there so that you could see it and know about it. Awesome. Um, just one last thing before you go. Uh, have our uh, anonymous study group survey that we like everyone to fill out. If you take a minute after, now that we're done, to just uh, do that for us, it greatly uh, helps us continue to improve the study groups. Uh, I think it's like le less than 10 questions. It should, and I think they're all, except for maybe one multiple choice, so it should only take a minute. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming and joining and uh, I'll get this video up probably sometime tomorrow. It'll take, let me stop the video or the recording. It'll take like a couple hours for it to process. Um,